there can be no victories without battles. Esther chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Sushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go into the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. As we continue in the story of Esther and, and the journey of her life, we have uh, seen that Esther has entered into this privileged position of being queen to King Ahasuerus, the Persian emperor. She must have been just trying to soak everything in of what has happened in her life and how God has brought her from being a young orphan girl to being the queen uh, of this huge empire at that time, enjoying the wealth, the luxuries, the, the riches of the land. Something happens. There is a man named Haman, the Agite. He's actually a descendant of the Amalekites. You know, when you go back in the history of, of, of Israel, you'll find that King Saul was actually uh, instructed to destroy the Amalekites when he had uh, gone into battle with them. However, he spared some of them. And so centuries later, we find that one of their very descendants, Haman the Agite, who was an Amalekite, now sought to destroy the Jews. Now Haman came into a place of influence in the court of King Ahasuerus. He was uh, his chief person. And he got King, the King Ahasuerus to sign a decree that to destroy all the Jewish people. And he promised King Ahasuerus that if that was done, there would be this huge sum of money brought in to the king's treasury. And so the king readily signed because to him, uh, it didn't see, it didn't amount to much, you know, destroying all the Jews and getting all this money that was seemed okay in his eyes. And so he signed the decree and the decree was sent out throughout the empire that all the Jews would be killed and destroyed. And so here we find Esther in the midst of a battle. Her cousin Mordecai sends information back to her saying, Esther, this is what's going on outside the palace. All your people, the Jewish people, are going to be destroyed. They're all going to be killed. And I want you to go before the king on behalf of your people and let the king know that he cannot just do this because you yourself are a Jew. So Esther finds herself in the middle of a battle. She's got a difficult situation in her hands. What would she do? How would she react? How would she respond? You know, this probably was the biggest challenge Esther ever faced in her life. But yet, this was the very moment God was preparing her for. This was the very battle God was setting her up for. Because through this battle and through her life and through what God had prepared her for, a great victory was going to be released. When God sets you up for a battle, just remember, He's setting you up for a great victory. Battles are invitations to great triumphs. So run into the battle. Don't shy away from it. That's the reason God has been working in your life. Let's pray. Father, help us to understand that without battles, there can never be victories. Give us the grace and the strength to fight the battles we face, knowing that you're only setting us up for great victories in life. Let us not shy away from battles. Let us not get discouraged in battles. Let us not get depressed because of the battles that may seem to be long. Help us to press through to victory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.